Welcome to the Lorekeeper Course, Volume 1.0 by Lixie Condorado. Today's installment is History Track 1, The Celts of the Early Iron Age, 800 to 450 BCE, also known as the Hallstatt Period. Around 800 BCE, a new group of Indo-European peoples began to enter Eastern Europe from the ancient Indo-European heartland of the Pontic Caspian Steppe. Greeks called them the Sumerians, and a few centuries later, the Thracians. Like their ancestors, they were herdsmen with a horse culture. The need for swift mobility across the wide open spaces had led them to place a strong emphasis on the care and training of horses. The Celts of the Upper Danube entered into alliances with these peoples and absorbed their cavalry techniques. At about the same time, iron technology reached them, also from the east, Armed with iron weapons and sophisticated cavalry, the Celts from the area between the Rhine and the Danube enjoyed an overwhelming military superiority over the peoples to the west of them, and easily established their control over the important trade routes between the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. A new aristocracy began to rule Central and Western Europe, building massive and impressive forts on hilltops from which they imposed their power on scattered herding and farming communities. In the year 600 BCE, the Phocasian Greeks, always on the lookout for new markets in the western Mediterranean, founded the city of Massalia, present-day Marseille, on the coast of southern Gaul, near the mouth of the Rhine. This provided a wonderful opportunity for the Celtic merchant princes. The Rhine and its tributary rivers afforded easy passage from the Mediterranean into the Celtic heartland. The fruitful trade that developed as a result of this made them immensely rich and allowed them to live in a style of dazzling opulence. Princely lineages confirmed their political power by lavishing gifts on their vassals and retainers at feasts where prestige items obtained through Mediterranean trade were ostentatiously, ostentatiously displayed. A vivid glimpse of this world of wealth and glamour can be obtained through the princely graves dating from this period, when cremation was being gradually abandoned in favor of, for aristocrats at least, burial in a chamber under a tumulus surrounded by items that had belonged to the deceased in life. The objects found in these graves illustrate the beauty and brilliance the Celtic merchant princes cultivated in their daily lives, as well as their ability to attain goods from far away as China. It may well be that the descriptions of the splendor of the royal courts in later Celtic literature reflect a distant memory of this colorful era. Archaeologists refer to this period in Celtic development as the Hallstatt period, Hallstatt period, after an Austrian site that built its wealth on the production of rock salt, another important item in European trade. Some important archaeological sites include Hallstatt in Austria, Dürnenberg in Austria, Hochdorf in Germany, Hüneberg in Germany, Hommeschel in Germany, Asperg in Germany, Madelinenberg, Germany, Ditchenherschlanden, Germany, Mungrain, Switzerland, Wittnauerhorn, Switzerland, Montlachois, France, Viche, France, Lagarin and Saint Columba, France, Chatillon sur Grand, France, Brani sur Swan, France, Les Jogasses, France, Golaseca, Italy, Camorta Como, Italy, Zavist in the Czech Republic, Manatin Haradek, Czech Republic, Blatnica, Slovakia, Sitz in Hungary, and some notable artifacts found in these areas are the burial chariot from Hochdorf, Germany, the burial couch from Hochdorf, Germany, giant Greek made wine krata from Vich, a gold torque from Vich, and a spiral ended amulet from Sitz, Hungary and a tomb eff effigy from Ditsenting Hersland in Germany. Some suggested basic reading. Barry Cunliffe's The Ancient Celts, pages 44 to 67, um, and from James the World of the Celts, pages 19 through 28, and Rizzoli's The Celts, pages 72 through 123. Questions to ponder. Describe and discuss the significance of each of the following sites. Hochdorf, Hüneberg, Vix, and Javist. Number two, from the archaeological evidence, what was the nature of the relationship between the Celtic world 
and the Mediterranean world in the early Iron Age. What items did they trade? Number three, what does the archaeological evidence tell us about the structure of early Iron Age Celtic society? And number four, discuss patterns and motifs in the artifacts of the period. Do any of these seem to be carried over from the previous late Bronze Age period? This concludes today's episode of Lorekeeper Course 1.0 from Alexi Kondriadov.